Hello everyone, welcome to the Ginger Snaps here's Christmas special. I'll be discussing a Christmas movie for you guys in a very blunt way. I'm your host, Stephen Harold, and if you remember back last year, I had done a Christmas special, and of course, it was for Black Christmas. Now, naturally, it only seems right to do a Christmas special with the 2006 remake, Black Xmas. But this year, I decided to go on a different route, because I just happened to watch a movie now for the second time, and holy shit, I have to actually talk about this movie. So, for this year's Christmas special, I'm going to be talking about none other than Christmas Bloody Christmas, released this year on Shudder. The movie is practically about a robotic Santa Claus that goes rogue because of all the other manufacturers of these Robo Santa Pluses have now been a part of an international recall. Gee, I wonder why, after, you know, serving the country and uh, were made for military warfare. Yeah, anywho, uh, one of them just happens to have not gotten picked up yet and reactivates to its default settings, which is, you know, being a a killing machine, and wreaks havoc on a small little town on Christmas Eve. Now, for a movie like this, this just sounds ridiculous, right? It sounds absolutely ridiculous. I remember seeing the trailer for this film, and immediately was like going into this, watching this film, with the only expectation is it's a robotic Santa Claus that kills people. Okay, what can we do? What can we expect from this movie and I didn't expect much from this film but after watching it and now watching it for a second fucking time I have to say this movie took me by surprise and a lot of people are talking about it. it this is also the same year where we had Violent Night come out which I haven't seen yet but I really wanted to really talk about this movie so uh yes um, I'm wearing a fucking Christmas Santa hat, I, I know. And yes, I know, this is a Freddy Krueger sweater, a Halloween sweater, but it's a Christmas sweater, and it only just seemed right. Anywho, let's get on to the review. For the story itself, as I've already explained, it's a uh, movie about a killer robotic Santa Claus that uh, was originally made for military combat, uh, and then all of a sudden, after these combats were over, all these uh, military robots practically got turned into Santa Clauses to practically replace the mall Santa. They've been put in stores and malls, toys places all over the place. And uh, they uh, have now been a part of an international recall because, hmm, gee, I wonder, uh, they probably went back to their default settings, you know, killing machines. Um, and then in the meanwhile of this, uh, we have two people who are co-workers, uh, Tori and Robbie. Um, they are just friends, obviously, as well. And they're just trying to figure out what to do for Christmas Eve. You know, they're drinking, they're smoking, you know. They're doing all the kind of things that, you know, a lot of people kind of do. Some people do, whatever. But they end up in the crosshairs of the one of the robotic Santa Clauses, the Robo Santa Plus, that never got recalled yet. And now it's a night of survival. So for a story like this, it's one of those ones where if you had to pinpoint describing a movie like how to like dumb it down for someone like how violent night essentially everyone says it's home alone die hard and john wick some people say john wick by it mainly home alone and die hard the best way to summarize this movie is silent night deadly night meets the terminator and that really got me because as you guys know if you guys have been fans of the channel for quite some time, you'll know that I had done the Terminator franchise, and I'm a big fan of that. So, a robotic killing Santa Claus. Hmm. This sounds interesting. This piques my interest. So, yeah, for a story itself, it's just ridiculous. I mean, it's one of those movies that is so self-aware of what it is that it's ridiculous, but it's so much of a great experience to actually watch it. It's really fucking Bat shit insane, but man, is it good. For the characters of Tori and Robbie, like I said, they are employees uh, that have kind of like a certain thing. Like, they are friends as well, but they have so much sexual innuendos with each other. Um, and the thing about these two characters is that you 
actually care about them. The, like, I can personally say from my own personal life that Tori and Robbie, characters like that, those are actually people I know. Those are like fucking people I hang out with or like have a drink once in a while or whatever. And they are just the, the two people that you just say, say to yourself when you're watching this movie, you're like, I want to fucking hang out with them. And ironically enough, you really care about them. They, they have such care, uh, great chemistry. Um, the, the music references, movie references that these guys just spew at each other. Their dialogue is amazing. I know there's a lot of F-bombs and whatever, whatnot. But for people of that kind of a culture, I, I kind of rock that culture anyways. Um, they are the kind of people that would talk that way. And for their characters, these two characters you follow throughout the whole movie, especially when they cross the path of the Robo Santa Plus, you want them to survive because you actually genuinely care about them. Especially, like, not even just that. You actually want them to hook up. You want them to, like, have sex with each other. Because, essentially, uh, Tori has a Tinder date uh, that she has blown off too many times before. And he's trying to talk her out of it. Because, let's face it, he kind of has a thing for her. It's just obvious. And then uh, you're just rooting for them to just hook up now. Other minor characters, obviously, as we all know, you know, we have Jeff Daniel Phillips, who is playing the sheriff of the town. Uh, this is one of the roles I do actually like him in because he's not like the regular Rob Zombie guy, right? You know, and I do like his performance in this movie. And like, even like other characters in this movie are like, you can tell they're kind of the cliche, like, yeah, you're just gonna, you're here for a fucking body count. But other than that, like, uh, Jeff Daniel Phillips, I do like his performance in this movie, and when it comes to all the characters, there are even the side characters that, even though you know they're only there to rack up the body count, I just like them all. They're all fucking great characters. Let's talk about that Robo Santa Plus, shall we? Um, so, oh, okay, um, oh, Robot Santa Claus that kills people with an axe. Sounds ridiculous. Until you remember, there was a movie made called Silent Night, Deadly Night. It was a guy dressed up as Santa, killing people with an axe. And then you remember a robot. I don't know. There's a hint right there. The Terminator, which was a killing machine that looked human. This sounded like a dumb idea, but for someone like me, who loves the Terminator franchise, and, uh, loves kind of dumb shit like this. This was up my alley. Every single time that Robo Santa Plus was on screen, I just had a great time with it. Cause like the, the actor himself playing the robot, yes, you, you're not gonna get the full on like robot portrayal. He has to walk like a human. I mean, like think of it, Arnold Schwarzenegger was even walking like a human in the Terminator, right? But you get the, sound effects of the robot walking and like just turning its head and everything like that. I love this Santa Claus and everything, the baggage that comes with it. And even like, even towards the end, I don't know how many fucking times I got excited seeing this thing come back. And I just, oh my God, to have a character like that where I'm excited to have it come back to life. Yeah, you fucking nailed it, guys. This movie with the killer Santa Claus that's a robot, just, oh, it's so fucking good. One of the things of this movie also that I cannot stress enough that I have to talk about is the fucking gore and the kills. My God, these kills are absolutely either hilarious, gory, or just downright fucking amazing to watch. Um... Yes, there are some unrealistic things, but then when you take into the consideration that it's a robotic Santa Claus, so it has the strength to do certain things, it, you know, makes sense, right? Um, just the amount of gore, the amount of kills, the amount of brutality in this fucking movie, just bottom line, bottom line, made this movie so much more entertaining than it actually should have been and of course as we all know if you haven't seen the trailer uh there is something spoiled in that trailer 
And yes, this movie had the balls to do it, and it did it rightfully so. I always respect a movie that goes there. It goes there. I'm not going to say what it is if you haven't watched it yet, but if you have, you know exactly what I'm fucking talking about. Some movies like, you know, It, Halloween 2018, Halloween Kills, a lot of these movies that have a certain death, I respect, and this movie has that. With the gore, the carnage candy, and all the kills in this movie are just so damn entertaining. Even the music in this fucking movie is so damn good. And the one thing that really got me into this fucking movie even more was the fact that there are certain things that hiken back to the Terminator. Not the Terminator franchise, the Terminator, the first fucking movie. You hear this sound effect every time the Robo Santa Plus is around. It's like, boom, 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 boom. Just like in the Terminator. And I picked that shit up real quick. The music with its, uh, with this soundtrack, I hope it comes out with a soundtrack because I want to fucking listen to it. Such good shit. The music that was used for this movie was smart to do. It's, it appeases to my demographic, obviously, as someone who loves a certain type of music, right? The, the movie is just a, a, like a check mark on music. It's so fucking good. If you guys like watch a scene and they have a specific track for that scene, trust me, it makes you get into it even more. Oh God, the finale. The fucking finale. Oh, my friend Chris, literally, he sat down and watched the movie with me. And every single time, if you guys have seen this movie, You'll know what I'm talking about. Every single time, it's down and out. I always say, get back up. Come on, get back the fuck up. And sure enough, gets back up. And I, like, jumped out of my fucking chair because of all the Terminator references. The fact that this thing is giving me more than I fucking asked for. I ask it to get up. It's It gets up. And... It just balls to the wall. This fucking movie kicks so much fucking ass, man. Like, oh my god. The ending sequence is like a, oh my god. I can't believe it. It's a Terminator on Christmas Eve. This is fucking amazing. This is my type of fucking film. And the ending just, oh, just fucking checks, marks the fucking boxes for everything I fucking asked for in this kind of movie dur throughout the duration of it. Because, like I said... When I walked into this movie to, with no expectations and was greeted to this kind of shit, I wanted more. And sure enough, I got it. And for anyone to sit here and actually watch this review and you haven't seen it yet and you watch the climax of this fucking film, you're probably going to get as excited as I was and more pumped up as I was, especially if you're a fucking Terminator fan. Now, of course, this movie does have some flaws. Uh, one of the flaws, obviously, being uh, just as a be careful, guys. Um, this movie does have a lot of neon lighting. Of course, it, it takes place on the Christmas season. It's on Christmas Eve. But there is so much overusage of Christmas lights, light bulbs, neon lights everywhere. And it's kind of distracting. And there are even, like, it. it's only a little bit of the scene of where... We finally see the Robo Santa Plus finally come to life. Um, you do see this POV, like you're watching through his eyes. Um, a lot of it's distorted because of the neon, how dark it is, and the certain scenery. And that's probably the only gripes that I have with the film. Of course, there's the traditional horror movie tropes where people make stupid decisions, they make the wrong choices, they don't fucking listen, and whatever. I mean, like, those are just standard tropes. But the one thing that definitely is uh, one of the biggest factors, obviously, is one of the negatives, obviously, of this film, is when the Robo Santa Plus's eyes turn green. And it's not like the Terminator, where it's just this light bulb. It's literally like a fucking laser. And sometimes that is distracting, because when you're looking through the, the robot's POV, and you're just following everything, sometimes it glares too much. But yeah, other than that, when it comes to certain lighting, maybe a little bit of the dialogue or or even hell, 
just some of the shit that happens in the movie when it comes to traditional horror movie tropes. It does get tiring. It's not a perfect film. And those are the only things I kind of have a problem with this film. Obviously, as we all know as well, that's definitely not fucking snow. I, I really want a fucking Christmas movie where they actually use fucking snow. Just come to Canada for fuck's sakes. Bottom line, guys, I've seen this movie now twice, um, and I've enjoyed it each time. This movie, with its characters, its killer, its gore, its kills, the soundtrack that was used for this movie, are just the things that make it so good. And one of the things that I can permanently say for myself is definitely this is one of those movies that, you know, like Black Christmas, like, you know, The Grinch or whatever, when you guys have a Christmas classic that you tend to watch around this time, this is one of those movies for me that I can like pop in now and watch on Christmas now. Um, I do have a tradition when it comes to Christmas, with, especially with my daughter. We watch the cartoon version of The Grinch, not the Bandit Cumberbatch movie, the classic one. And of course, The Grinch, the Jim Carrey film. But then when she's not around, it was always... Silent Night, Deadly Night, or Black Christmas, or even hell, Bad Santa. And I can easily say, just to me, in my personal opinion, Christmas Bloody Christmas has become a Christmas classic to me. And now it's going to be one of the films I tend to watch around the Christmas season. And I am so fucking happy to have watched this film and appreciate it for what it is. It's everything I fucking wanted throughout the whole entire runtime of this film with minor hiccups, minor flaws, or minor things that bothered me in this film. But either way, I had such a blast watching this fucking movie. Like I said, this fucking movie kicks ass, man. I fucking, oh, what a great time. Anywho, guys, for my rating, I'm going to give Christmas Bloody Christmas an 8 out of 10. So guys, what did you think of Christmas Bloody Christmas? Is it a Christmas classic to you guys, or is it not your cup of tea? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, make sure you also give it a thumbs up and also subscribe for more content. And don't forget to hit that bell notification if you want to get notified about all the other videos coming out on this channel. And that's it for me, guys. Uh, this has been my kind of Christmas special that I really wanted to do. And this is going to be a tradition now going forward where I release a Christmas special every year but by the time this video comes out it'll be christmas eve so in part of saying that guys merry christmas happy holidays enjoy with your family and loved ones have a great time and also watch a few movies especially this one anyways guys that's it for me this has been the ginger snaps here's christmas special i am stephen harrell and I will talk to you guys later. Again, Merry Christmas.